Welcome to episode 14 of Mage 2 Kata, the ORM Entity Kata. In this episode, we are going to write the test to confirm that a custom entity is all wired up correctly. Magento has plenty of entities of its own, right? We have products and customers and orders and so on, but quite often customizations require more. So, for this exercise, I decided to create a floppy disk entity. Because I want to be able to organize my collection of floppy disks for my SX64 in a better way. So let's dig in and enjoy! In this episode we are going to create some tests for a or RM entity. A little floppy disk collection. This is a standard entity, a model, a resource model and a collection. Now the thing with the Magenta ORM entities is there isn't a whole lot of custom code to test. We just configure each of those three classes to work correctly with the others and we're done. It just happens that this configuration is done in PHP by extending the parents class and calling underscore init. They could have easily changed that to use DI XML, but it's still just like in Magento 1. So in the model, in the underscore construct method, we call underscore init and pass along the class name of the resource model. Otherwise, there's nothing special going on here, just a bunch of setters and getters. And here in the resource model, we initialize it with the table name and the ID field, right? And finally, in the collection, we initialize it by passing along the class name of the model and the resource model. And that's it. So even though it's less code than a Magento 1 because we don't need the config XML, it's still quite a bit of code. And I want my test to ensure that I get all this more or less boilerplate wiring up of the classes correct. Besides the entity code, there's just this little install schema class which creates the table. So let's write an integration test and it needs to be an integration test because we want to check our classes work together with the parent code they inherit from. Let's call it, I don't know, floppy disk or an entity test. And it extends PHP unit framework test case. Oops. Okay, and the first test I want to write is test can save and load. So my idea is to create a model, populate it with some data, save it, and then load that same data again into a different model to check everything works. Now because we're saving and loading data into the database here, it's a good idea to add an annotation. Not covers, but rather Magento DB isolation enabled. This will ensure test isolation by opening a transaction before the test runs, then executing the test, and rolling back the transaction once the test completes. Good, let's start by creating a floppy. And for this we'll use the test framework object manager, get instance, create, floppy disk class. Since I know already we're going to use this a bunch of times, I'll just go ahead and extract that right away into its own method instantiate floppy and this allows us to add a nice type hint. I prefer my test utility methods at the top and we're set. Now let's set a bunch of values to be saved on the floppy. So how about a brand? This is a string and I usually just go for a unique ID with some prefix for these. And um, what else have we got here? We've got a capacity in kilobyte. Sometimes I like using random values because that kind of documents the expected range of values. Um, so the smallest ones I remember I think were something like 280. And the largest ones I remember are maybe 1.2 megs. Um, not that it's really important. I should have looked this up. Close enough. So what else have we got? Um, date of manufacturer. That's a MySQL date field, so it's a string, year, month, day. Hey, that goes into here. And let's say uh, we want a date between, hmm, uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's maybe something like 
1971. And uh, let's make some more room here. And um, how about 1989? Something like that. Well, to be honest, I think they were in production much longer, but this is good enough. Now, what's left? Uh, size and color. So the color, that's a string. Let's just use a hex value. Uh, any value between 0 and 255 is valid, and let's concatenate three of those. All right, and uh, finally, we have a size. So for the size, I guess um, there we need a list of possible sizes. Let's start with an 8 inch, the old IBM ones, and then we've got a 5 and a quarter inch, and a 3 and a half inch, and a 3 inch too, even though I've never really used those. I know they're more, but I don't care about those, and I just want one of those, so I want array rand. All right, I think those were all the attributes I've got here. Oh, what's that? Something wrong here? Oh yes, we need to concatenate that. Thanks PHP Storm, that was helpful. Now to save, the CRUD methods on the models themselves have been deprecated, so we'll just use the resource model directly to save it. Right, object manager, get instance, create, and this time we're using the resource model. Save. Floppy. And again, because I know we are going to reuse this, I'll just go ahead and extract this into its own method. Instantiate resource model. Um, let's import this here. floppy resource and a type int. All right. Oops. And move that up as a utility method as well. Good. So now we've got a saved floppy. Let's go ahead and load it into another model so we can check the values were persisted correctly. Um, floppy to load. This instantiate floppy, this instantiate resource model, load, floppy to load, and the ID we want to load is the ID of floppy. Now let's check some values. I generally assume the core code works and I don't want to test the core code, uh, so if we compare two or three values and they're okay, I think we're safe. Assert same. Let's start with ID. I expect the value of dollar floppy get ID to be matched by floppy to load get ID. Right, and then maybe the date of manufacture. No particular reason to choose this property over another one. We could of course check more or all, but somehow I feel that would be just busy work. Now this should work. If however any of the entity plumbing was incorrect, this should fail. Yeah, good, we're green. But I want to confirm that the test actually works, so it would fail if something in the code were broken. To me, it's uh, pretty important that I see every test fail at least once. So let's say we have a bug in here, maybe a leftover from an incomplete refactoring. I've actually had stupid stuff like this in here before by accident. This one blew the stack due to the recursive instantiation. Okay, and this fails. Good. Okay, I'll fix that so all is uh, good again. But now I also want to break the resource model. So what might happen in the resource model? Well, maybe a typo in the table name. This should also cause our test to fail. Yep, that also fails. 
So let's fix it again. Okay, one last run of the test to confirm everything's fixed correctly. And after this passes, it's time to go back to the test class and add a new test for the collection, because so far all we've used is the model and the resource model, not the collection class. So everything's back to green, wonderful. Time to move on. Time to check if I messed up wiring up that collection. And this is the new test. Let's call it test can load multiple floppies. For the collection we need to ensure a few floppies exist, so let's create some. And we already have the code to create floppies, so let's extract that into a helper method. Um, create floppy. Okay, that's all good. Let's move that up. First utilities, then tests. And now we can easily create some floppies. Let's do two. Dollar this, create floppy. One more time. Now we know there are two or more floppies. Time to create the collection. Um, object manager, get instance, create. Uh, collection, class. Let's add a type hint. Okay. And what I would like to check now is that this collection contains at least these two models. Could be more, we don't know, but we'll just check if these two are part of the collection. There are many ways to do that, but an easy trick to do that is to use assert contains and we check for the presence of the model ID. So this ID should be contained within and then we'll use array keys with collection get item. Get items returns the collection as an array and the indexes are the item IDs. That's why that works. There's also a method get all IDs, but that in Magento 2 doesn't actually load the collection, so we don't want to use that. But as I said, there are many ways to do it. Um, anyway, let's check if this works. Good, just as expected. Now I want to see this test fail too, at least once. So let's just assume while writing this collection we made a mistake. Well, I don't know, how about this? Just one of the usual annoying little typos that tend to cost so much time to find. Oh great, a failure, just as expected. Great, now we can fix it again. Run the tests, and if they pass, we're done. Another nice effect of having this kind of basic ORM configuration test in place is if I expand the entities and add some custom logic, maybe some joins or, or something, I already have a test in place where I can add more test methods. And yeah, by the way, we're green again. Please share your thoughts. You can leave a comment here under the video or ping me on Twitter. Thank you for your attention and your time, and I hope to see you again next time.